Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to another video. This is the Christmas collaboration with Claire's Crafty Corner. So thank you, Claire, for organising another brilliant collab. Now, this video has a sort of tenuous link to Christmas, but I am going to make the project go down a Christmas route as well. First of all, I need to tell you a little bit about this. So this is a bottle. An empty bottle that used to have vieux cognac in it from 1811. So straight away, a bottle this old, pretty special. Now what makes this really special is this glass badge on the front of it, this seal. That is a comet seal. And in 1811, there was a comet that was um, discovered by um, Honoré Flagère. And this comet was really bright and visible for re like quite a few weeks. And as usual, there was the usual hysteria around comets bringing bad luck and all that kind of jazz. But that year was a really good vintage for grapes and there was a really long hot summer. It led to some really amazing grapes, which then in turn led to some amazing wines and cognacs. So brewers cashed in on this and started to sell Comet wine. And on the glass bottles with the cognac and the wine, they had this seal on it which is basically a comet so but it's not really a comet it's a star with a tail but <laughs> that that was their version of comets i am so happy that i managed to get hold of this somebody in our village had the bottle and as soon as i saw it i was like how much money do you want i have to own this it's amazing it's just so amazing now ever since i got this bottle i have wanted to make some kind of inlay from this so that I can put it into pendants or key rings. That is exactly the same diameter as my pendant mould. That I've got two pendant moulds that have circles in them. That is exactly the same size as both, so it's kind of like it was meant to be. But I am so scared of actually pouring silicone on this. There is some writing still on the label here. I don't want to do anything that's going to destroy this label further. It is so old. It's like 200, over 200 years old. So what I decided I'm going to do is use some air dry clay. No, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so exhausted. I'm just reached the end of a massive work project. I'm so sleep deprived. What I'm going to use is polymer clay. So polymer clay can be used to cast silicone inlays with, even if it hasn't been um, baked. So I'm going to use some of my air dry clay. I have loads of it. Um, I got a load for Christmas last year and still haven't had time to play with it. So I'm going to push it on there so that I've got an imprint of this in my polymer clay. Then the inlay will be the same as this. So the, the obviously the polymer clay imprint will be that back to front. The inlay will then be the right way round so that when I lay that into resin, it's going to leave a, a design that protrudes forward in whatever I put the inlay in. So that's the plan. So I'm probably going to make three imprints of this. So I'll mix up some silicone to do that. And while I've got the silicone mixed up, because I, I really can't picture how much I'm going to need, what I'm also thinking of doing is making some inlays of one of my Cuttlebug embossing folders. So basically just pour the silicone onto this. There's positive and negative side, so I can do that. But also to incorporate my Comet um, inlay into something Christmassy. I've also got my Christmas tree. Now, the way that comets vaguely relate to Christmas is that there are quite a few pieces of art that have portrayed the Star of Bethlehem as a comet. As an astronomer myself, I know that there is no evidence there was a comet visible at that time. But still, we have a lot of art that depicts the Star of Bethlehem as a comet. So that's my tenuous link to Christmas. But if I um, I'm going to make the pendants um, with the inlays, but I'm also just going to do something Christmassy, maybe with um, the comet at the top. And I've got my... Um, I can't remember what make it is, but it's a really solid silicone, the way that the thinner bear moulds are made out of. I've got some beautiful star and cloud um, moulds. So I may pour some silicone in there and just hope it doesn't stick. Until you try it, you don't know. So I'm not going to pour it in all the holes just in case I don't want to trash my mould. So once I've got all those inlays, I can, in theory, create a kind of Christmas scene. So I'll have the options with the snowflakes. I'll have my Christmas tree. 
So I may end up doing two separate projects, one to use the inlay in pendants, one to use the inlay as part of a, a scene with a comma over a Christmas tree. So I have no idea if any of this is going to work. I'm so tired right now, I can barely even get dressed each day. So <laughs> it's just nice to be up here filming. I've been batch filming, um, so I haven't actually filmed a video for a little while. When this video's done, I may need a bit of a break. Um, I, the, I've been working insane hours, like till midnight, one, two in the morning for weeks now, and I just need some downtime. So I'm gonna probably take a bit of a break from YouTube and just spend some time with my family and do Christmassy things. Um, I may get bored after Christmas cause I'm not very good at doing nothing, but just a heads up, I may not be posting very much over the holiday period cause I, I, I really do just need some time. So let's get on with this project. I've conditioned several blobs of um, polymer clay. Um, you can reuse this afterwards so it should be fine. This particular one I'm having trouble with, I just cannot get it to actually bake properly no matter how long I leave it in the oven. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is kind of nice and soft and I'm just going to push this down over the Comet badge. I want to try to get the edges so that I've got like a well. I won't be pouring the silicone in quite that deep, but I want the lip. I want it to kind of have that round edge. So I don't know if I'm... <laughs> oh no, it's too thin. Too thin around the edges. We'll see what we've got on the inside. It's the trouble is this stuff is such soft polymer clay that it's now not behaving. Okay, that sort of worked. Redo that one. Maybe there's not quite enough clay in that blob. I'll try this one. The badge is really chunky and it's not actually symmetrical either because it's just glass that's been, a glass badge that's sort of been glued onto the bottle when the bottle was blown. I'm so scared of damaging this bottle. absolutely roaring. Okay, that one's better, but I'm going to have to sort of manually pull this lip up because the silicone's going to roll out otherwise. Maybe I just need more clay, I think. That that one might have worked, but um it was chunky on the bottom. I, I need more up the sides flatten it a bit first then push that down third time lucky hopefully it needs to be thick enough to kind of hold itself it's just getting it off you have to kind of curl it up to get it off again and that taking away that's better that one will work that's okay so you can see that the badge itself is not perfect it's got imperfections in it from being such an old bottle and I think that's really cool I like that it gives it character so that one worked so the method there was and um, basically I need more clay so I think I'm going to actually combine some of this one into this. So I'm going to roll it into a ball, squash it, turn it over, squash it again, and then push from the middle. I wonder what the VO cognac people would think if they knew that was it 222 years later would be a very sleep deprived blonde messing around making a cast of their badge. <laughs> That's quite funny. Okay, try and peel that one up. So I need to hold 
the bottle so that this badge is lying flat because the badge is not lying flat the badge is wedge shaped and it's making it really hard to cast looking at the other one it's sloping massively downwards towards here the tail end which means the silicone is going to do something quite weird so I'm going to I don't want to touch the inside of this because it's shiny and the silicone will take on the texture. Um. Oh no, <laughs> this is really annoying. That would be really bad. The silicone would go all around the edges and there'd be nothing in the middle. You definitely don't want that. Fingerprint on that. Damn it. That wasn't too bad. But they are still sloped. That's the problem. I think having... It's not that thin at the bottom though. That's the thing. Okay, that's chunkier. Oh, God's sake, that's got debris in it. For flipping heck. Oh, can I get that out? Like a shard of metallic glitter or something. Okay, I think I've saved that one. Okay, I've mixed up some black and white, which when rolled out will make some nice pendants uh, if I ever get around to it. So I've made it into a ball, squashed it into a disc again, and I'm going to do what I did with the others. Okay, that one's good. Hard to see in the marble pattern again it's just the, they are deeper on one side than another it's really strange I'll try I'll give it a go I'll make sure my stirring sticks are handy as I said so I can kind of lift one side up I might struggle with this one so the silicone that I'm going to use I have a little bit of this smart so world silicone start so sorry I found this to be absolutely brilliant. It mixes easily. It's completely bubble free. You can see the bubbles popping all by themselves. It's awesome stuff. It was really inexpensive from Amazon. Um, so I'm going to keep my tree there. I'm going to have to put masking tape on the back of this because it's got little holes because it's a cuttle bug die cut. So I need to tape the back of that so that the silicone doesn't soak through. And this is the moon and stars one that I'm going to make some inlays of as well. Just pray that the silicone doesn't stick to this silicone. So I'll mix my silicone up off camera. Um, normally I mix it for like four minutes or so and then it's usually ready to pour and you can demold it in about eight hours. Okay, silicone is mixed. Scraped the sides, scraped the bottom, giving it a good mix. So I'm... Um, gonna just start putting this in and see how it flows so inlays really don't need to be very thick um, can I just bolster that a little bit the inlay is not a uniform size, laying it into something is going to be tricky. Almost too much the other way now. I'm worried about this one because I'm having way too much silicone here, I think. Okay, so I'm happy with those. They look okay, so I'm going to do my Christmas tree next.
so reluctant to um, fill another moon mold in here because I really like this mold and if that sticks I don't want to lose my favorite moons whatever I can find in my cuttle bug collection and see what I can make another mold out of so this technically can be demolded in six hours I just read the bottle but I'm going to bed now so I'll demold or peel these out tomorrow and hopefully everything will be all right Hi guys, it's been 14 hours and this resin is demoldable after 12, um, so it's pretty solid. So I'm going to take my inlays out. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare with bubbles, but hopefully I'll be able to get these out and get a result. Now I'm, I'm thinking that I may have to cut the comma out on these round ones as well, but we'll see. I'm just not sure how this is going to have translated but if it's wonky it's going to look like the bottle which is kind of the point complete with all the flaws on the surface of the bottle so this is stuck <laughs> I'm just just rolling my thumb to try and pull it away without breaking the seal on the mold but it doesn't seem to want to come out um, um, um. Can I get my tweezers under there? I've got to backfill these so I really don't want to break the seal on the resin. Except the resin had overflowed around the edges. Okay. So those two I'm going to brush with mica powder. So I'm going to use the dark green first, um, which is what I'm going to use on my tree. And I'm also going to try one of them with the golden colour Let's Resin um, colour shifting mica because this has a kind of gold and a green texture which is kind of a bit like real comets actually. A lot of comets are green. Okay so for the tree I'm going to do the tree in green. I've also decided that I'm going to paint paint a little bit of white acrylic on here so that it's got a white base because I'm going to do the background black and I think it might look weird just having a black background with a tree just slapped in there so I'm going to use some mica powder on all of the imprints here so my moon and stars I'm going to use the silver white mica and I'm going to use a colour shift in one called Magic Gold which is paler than the Let's Resin colour shift but this is going to have that goldy green sort of tinge so that the comet has a distinct colour from the stars. So that is my plan. I'm actually wondering whether to just do a little bit of acrylic paint on the tips of this tree because it's got that detail and I think that would actually look really nice. So I think I'm going to do that and brush the rest with mica because so I think those details would look really good with a little bit of paint in them. So I've got my white acrylic paint here so I'm going to get that on first. And I'm thinking as well that once I've got the mica on I may just 
paint over it because when I put black on the white mica I don't think it's going to stay particularly white. <laughs> I don't know but I don't think it will. I may have to do a couple of layers and let it dry in between because this is not really looking great. Right, I will leave that for now and get some mica on here. Um, let's my brush first because that's the one I really don't want to be mixed with other colours. Dot that in with stars. I need to clean off um, clean off all the mica when I'm done with this because it's going everywhere. <laughs> okay, magic gold for the comet. Right, from there I'm going to go in with the golden chameleon in one of these. Come up and over and it's actually sitting up higher and I don't think my background coat is going to get that. I'm just wondering if I can just trim some of that excess away. Okay, that should fill better now. That's good. I have a similar issue in this one, but that lip isn't protruding as much. I think it's going to be harboring air bubbles though, so I'm going to just trim some of the lip off. Right, that final one is going to be dark green because that is the colour of the original bottle. So I've been going from light to dark here, so if there's any cross-contamination with the brush, it won't show up too much. Oh yeah, that's the colour of the bottle. Okay, so I'm preferring the way this looks right now, but once the black gets on that, it'll look different. So I can't really do anything else here until this acrylic paint dries and it doesn't look like it's there yet. So I'm just going to have to leave this and come back and add more when all of these blobs have dried. Right, I found a better quality white acrylic paint, which actually had pigment, <laughs> so I've done the snow again, given that loads of time to dry. So I just need to put the green on my Christmas tree, clean up any spills, and then I can just back these with um, some resin coloured with black. I'm uh, doing this now at midnight again. My big project that had finished, I've now got some edits I have to do on it, so I've been working again till midnight, <laughs> trying to get all my Christmas cards made, trying to do all my Christmas shopping, trying to get all the presents wrapped before I go and visit my family at the weekend, so who needs sleep, eh? All we need is coffee and we can do this.
Okie dokie, I need to find some sticky tape and what have I done with it? Oh, it's over here. And yeah, try to clean off the excess mica and acrylic paint from the areas that I just want to be plain black. All right, I am going to, like I did with my Christmas ornaments, I just want to put a very small number of Actually, will they stick or will it float? Just a few little sprinkles of glitter. Not sure if this will stick to, to the resin like it does the silicone mold. I'll just pop a couple down. If they stay, they stay. If not, it doesn't matter. They'll probably float. That's okay. So I'm going to mix up my resin off camera. I didn't say in the intro that the resin that I'm using at the moment is... This is Fun Funksim resin. And it is so amazing at the outgassing. Like you pour it and you can see the bubbles dissipating the way that you do when you pour silicone rubber. It's so good. It's like brilliant. It's, I mean, I've, the um, Apex resin, phenomenal. The expensive high heat stuff. This is easily the second and it's a little bit cheaper than like the main brands. Gives me a significantly better result than a lot of the other brands that I've used. So really happy that I gave that a, a shot so I'm going to mix this up off camera obviously I'm going to stick my apron and my gloves and my respirator on and make sure that I'm keeping myself safe even though this is going to be very quick and I'm just gonna add black pigment to really bring out the colors in the night sky on this so I'll be back when I'm ready to pour Okay, it's been a day and a half, I think, since I poured these. I think I put a little bit too much pigment in and that combined with how cold it's been, they didn't want to cure. So they've been in a warm place now and they're, they're pretty much there. So they're, they're okay to demold. So I think first I'm going to look at the Comet badges. Um, no particular favourite order here. I'm just really intrigued to see how these have turned out. I over poured one of these and it was domed and then all of a sudden it started to leak everywhere so I had to uh, scrape it so the mold's covered in bits. Right so let's have a look at the one with the hole in first. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! That is exactly like the bottle! Oh wow. Oh wow. That's so cool. I'll bring you down for a closer look because the lighting's not great there. Now you can see where I trimmed the inlay, which isn't great, but I this one's better. That looks exactly like the badge on the bottle. That's exactly what I was hoping for. That's awesome. So I actually quite like it even with the flaws. Um, see how this looks, because then it'll give me an idea of how that would look if I made the circular piece with just the comet cut out. Because I've got an inlay now that is just the comet. So I have option to do both. I've got no idea what this is going to have come out like. I've never made anything like this before. Okay. Oh, 
it's a bit messy in places, but it kind of worked. I love, gosh, the th how three-dimensional everything looks is really cool. I'm going to bring you down to show you this properly. So yeah, there's there's some bits where the paint hasn't taken very well. If I did this again, I would use white polyurethane resin for those bits. So some of the mica's kind of spread out, some of the paint has blobbed and it makes my stars look a bit untidy. But what's really cool is how 3D this whole thing looks when you tip it on the side. The tree inlay worked surprisingly well. Now, this is not the kind of thing I would normally make, um, but it turned out okay. Yeah, the, the snow on the tree is pretty terrible. Uh, I think I forgot to clean up around the edges, but, you know, you kind of get the idea. And the comet actually looks really cool. So I know that I have the option to put just this inlay into one of these if I really wanted to. So it's got all of the scratches and imperfections that the bottle has, which means it's a, a bit of rogue glitter in that one. Um, but yeah, that means that it is a, a good kind of facsimile of the, of the badge, the Comet Wine badge. That's really, really cool. But yeah, I do have the option of using just that part in here so if I wanted to do that for a kind of neater finish I could I could just have this in a plain green I have to trim it down a little bit it's just a little bit too big for my mold but yeah I I love those I love those so so much this bottle is just so special to me it's just one of those it's one of those things that I will never part with. I love it. It's a 200 year old bottle and it's got a comma on it. And just to be able to make the replicas of that is just awesome. So choices with this, I can drill through it and put a bale on there, or I could gl um, glue a bale onto the back and turn it into something. If this is keyring, I would be more inclined to drill a hole because I don't trust any glue to be a key ring with the bale glued on so yeah i hope you enjoyed that um don't forget to check out all the other videos in the collab they will all be in the playlist which is in my description box so please go and see what all the other artists have created i hope you have a wonderful christmas um as i said earlier on i'm going to be taking a little bit of a break over christmas and new year but i'll be back in the new year with um some more crafting videos for you have a wonderful christmas everybody and i hope 2024 is a, a great year and i'll see you all soon bye for now